It is now time for oral questions. I recognize the member for Timiskaming College. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance, someone we are hoping is willing to answer the questions that the people of Ontario are asking. Yesterday, the President and CEO of the Ontario Chamber of Commerce wrote to the Minister concerning the government's proposal to rip up the contract with the beer store. In his words, and I quote, breaking a legitimate contract is a short-sighted approach. Does the minister agree, or would he now characterize Chamber of Commerce members as, certain, as certainly as beer insiders? Questions addressed to the Minister of Finance. Thank you. Speaker, nowhere else in the world does a government give the biggest beer companies special privileges at the expense of consumers and at the expense of the industry. The three global beer giants are for profits, not for the people. Most people in the province of Ontario do not know, and I tell you, when I was first elected as an MPP, I did not know that the beer store was not owned by the government. Well, it's not owned by the government. It is owned by three global Order. beer giants who got a sweetheart deal from the Liberal government. The Liberal government put Order. profits ahead of people, Speaker. That's, that is the result is a lucrative deal for the beer store and their insiders. Supplementary question. Rocco Rossi isn't just the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce. He's also a former PC candidate, who the minister has enthusiastically quoted in this legislature. He's now joining the chorus of concerned citizens that the government, telling the government that the hundreds of millions of dollars they planned to spend on their beer store scheme could be better invested in true services for the people of Ontario. Will the minister reconsider these reckless plans? Again, the Minister of Finance. Uh, speaker, we campaigned on a promise to put the people first, including by growing jobs, expanding choice and expanding convenience and the, uh, for the people of Ontario. Speaker, our Order. government is open for business and open for jobs. And since coming into office, over 170,000 net new jobs have been created across the province. And just last week, Fitch Bond Rating Agency gave us an upgrade, their first they've done in eight years. Yeah. And Speaker, that came after after we launched our legislation to bring choice and convenience to the people. The beer store knows that a government need not continue legislation from a previous government or continue with bad liberal deals. Special Advisor Ken Hughes says the agreement, and I'm quoting here, stifles competition, keeps Response. prices artificially high, and prevents new craft brew beer entrepreneurs from getting a strong foothold in the market. That's what the NDP want to see, Premier yeah. or Speaker. Final supplementary. The Ford government started out attacking people they believed to be their enemies. Now they're alienating their friends. Oh. Not to mention the millions of Ontario families who want to see a government focus on better classrooms and ending hallway medicine. Instead, we have a government that's cutting those things while they tweet about plans to potentially blow hundreds of millions of dollars because they're breaking contracts. What kind of government claims to understand business and breaks? contracts with companies. The Ontario Breaking a legitimate contract is a short-sighted approach. Will the government come to their senses and realize this and cancel that plan today? Minister Finance. Speaker, again, nowhere else in the world does a government give the biggest beer company special privileges at the expense of consumers and the rest of the industry. The three global beer giants are for profits, not for the people. You have to ask yourself, Speaker, why these multinational companies are so opposed to having the government help them sell more of their products in many stores. It's because of the lucrative deal, the sweetheart deal they received from the previous Liberal government. They're ignoring the economic opportunity that's before us. 9,100 new jobs will be created and $3.5 billion added to our economy. The Ontario Chamber of Commerce should join us in supporting small businesses, supporting consumers, and supporting our local brewers. Thank you very much. The next question 
the member for Brampton Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Minister of Health. It seems the Premier is unwilling or unable to answer questions about this government's health care spending, spending cuts, so I'll ask the Minister directly. Yesterday, yesterday, the Minister dismissed a report from the Financial Accountability Office detailing the Ford government's health care cuts as accounting differences. Among the FAO's findings was that the government's budget would reduce health care spending by $2.7 billion. Speaker. Can the Minister provide details of what will be cut? Questions to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. In fact, what we're doing is increasing our health care spending. We're spending $1.3 billion more on health care spending in the province of Ontario. We're adding $174 million new dollars to mental health and addictions funding. We're providing a new program of $90 million for our dental programs for low-income seniors. We have provided $384 million in operational funding increases for hospitals. We are on the increase, and we're modernizing our system, transforming our system in the process of it. The supplementary question. In the report, the FAO is clear. And I'll quote, we cannot disclose the $2.7 billion reduction in planned spending from the 2008 budget plan to the 2019 budget plan by program area, as the province has deemed this information to be a cabinet record, end quote. In other words, the Ford government is making deep cuts, but they won't tell us exactly what they're cutting. In my community of Brampton, our hospital has been struggling over capacity for decades now, with patients routinely being treated in hallways. Those patients want to know, where is this government planning to find $2.7 billion in health care spending cuts. Minister to reply. Again, we are increasing spending, as I indicated before, by $1.3 billion across the province. We are making changes. We are modernizing our system. We want to make sure that our system becomes patient-focused, that we, people can achieve uh, connected services when they go for health care services. We are going through the spending right now in estimates. I just started this morning in the Estimates Committee. You're welcome to come by and listen to some of the explanations. We are going through with specific questions from the official opposition about spending. Spending is increasing, not decreasing in health care. The final supplementary question. Speaker, the Minister of Health, Health must know that this government is on the wrong track. As patient ombudsman, she heard from patients waiting in hallways and nurses worried about the care that patients are receiving. She knows that $2.7 billion in health care cuts will have a devastating impact here in this province. But instead of standing up for patients, she's tweeting photos of herself being at convenience stores and promoting the Premier's billion-dollar beer boondoggle. Why is the minister refusing to disclose the details of the $2.7 billion health care cuts? Minister of Health and Long Term Care. Again, it's very clear to the people in the committee, to the people of Ontario, Order. where the money is being spent. I am in estimates right now. I will be there for another six hours. If you have any questions, please come by and ask, because you know, the members of your party are asking me questions about money that's being spent. It's very clear that it is an increase in spending. Which you voted against. That which you voted against, we are increasing spending and making our care services more connected for patients. I can certainly say through you, Mr. Speaker, to you that as patient ombudsman, what I did hear about on a daily basis was how disconnected people felt from their services. They felt that once they were discharged from hospital, they were left to their own devices. They had to find their own supports and services. Home care, long-term care was not connected. We are going to connect patients to the services Spons? they need throughout their health care journey. Here, here. Thank you. The next question, the member for Kiwetanong. Miigwecha, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is, this morning is for the Minister responsible for women's issues. The final report of the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls Commission released, uh, released yesterday made 231 calls for justice. Uh, we thank um, the families for coming forward and sharing their truth-telling stories to improve the lives of Indigenous women and girls. Previous reports and commissions have made over 1,200 recommendations, Mr. Speaker, to all levels of government to address the issue of violence against Indigenous women and girls. Mr. Speaker, how many of these recommendations has Ontario fully implemented? 
question is addressed to the Minister responsible for women's issues. I want to thank my colleague for raising this very important issue in the Legislature today. One of the most emotional periods of my life, I think, in public office was sitting there yesterday um, as we accepted the report. I was pleased uh, to be the only government uh, representative there that actually walked to accept the recommendations with our Ontario Regional Chief, um, Roseanne Archibald, and it was uh, very meaningful for me. Uh, a number of those recommendations we're working on. We're going to continue to work with our federal government uh, counterparts with respect to Bill C-92 and Jordan's principle, and we're going to continue to ensure that we have a strong Indigenous-led voice within the Ministry of Children and Youth, Community and Social Services with respect to women's issues as well. I look forward to working with the member opposite as he brings forward these uh, very important issues. I will say this to those who may not have seen it. But standing there yesterday to watch the grandmother of Tina Fontaine, a young girl that was 15 years old when she was murdered in Manitoba, was uh, probably one of the most poignant things I've ever seen, Speaker, and that is why this government, under the Premier Ford, is committed to ensuring that we support our Indigenous sisters. Restart the clock. Supplementary question. Uh, I, I want to thank the member for answer, but we have to understand we've things have been this way for generations and generations, and now people live it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to accept the report from the inquiry and say the government will listen. Indigenous people expect action and systemic change, Mr. Speaker. Changes such as cutting the Indigenous Cultural Fund, making mandatory. Uh, indigenous um, culture curriculum as an elective and cutting the child advocate are not acts of positive systemic change, Mr. Speaker. These cuts impact Indigenous safety and the future of our people. Will the government commit to reversing these cuts as the first step in responding to the recommendations from yesterday? And also providing funding for prevention programs to counter violence against Indigenous women and girls and provide support programs for those left behind. Members to please take their seats. Minister to reply. Uh, thanks very much. I want to, uh, I, I appreciate the question. I there's only a few times in this confederation, I think, when there are certain parliaments that sit where you actually witness a momentous occasion, such as the one that I was fortunate to yesterday, um, as we talked about the missing and uh, mur murdered Indigenous women, as well as those from the LGBTQ plus community. Let me answer the, the member opposite um, this way. We're going to be inviting an advocate for children and youth within the Ministry of Community and Social Services with responsibilities for children and women. We have a number of Indigenous-led children's aid societies in the province of Ontario, one of which I just signed off on a few weeks ago. We're going to continue to collaborate uh, with our Indigenous-led uh, uh, child welfare systems across the province, and I hope to grow them. I think that we have an opportunity there, and I think we have an opportunity to work with the federal government on Bill C-92, so long as they don't reduce our standards. Uh, finally, we have uh, an Indigenous-led child welfare Response. roundtable that will be created uh, in the coming weeks, and I'm very excited about this, and I'll be making an announcement shortly. And just on, with respect to poverty reduction, we're taking social assistance reforms very seriously, and that is why we are, we are consulting our First Nations. Speaker, this is an important issue that every member of this assembly and every person in the province of Ontario should be aware of. We must stand with our Indigenous sisters and LGBTQ plus individuals as they confront systemic racism across the province and this country. The next question, member for Haldeman Norfolk. Hey. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. The skilled trades are critical to our economy, yet so many jobs are going unfilled. I've heard from employers in my riding who are frustrated, the red tape, stifling regulation that the previous skilled trades framework created, and the lack of action by the previous government to make life easier for those in the trades. So I'm so pleased to hear last week the Premier our Minister of uh, Training Colleges and Universities announced our government's plan to modernize the trades. 
Tradespeople in my riding are excited to see a government finally taking the trade seriously. Can the Premier tell us more about how important this plan is for these people and how it will help Ontario open for business and open for jobs? <clears throat> Questions to the Premier. Well, through you, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my all-star, and he's a real all-star, from Haldeman, Norfolk. I was up... <laughs> I was, up in, I was up in his area at a fish fry. I can tell you the people absolutely love him. But through you, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank Opposition the Minister of Training North. Colleges and Universities, as well as her parliamentary assistant and the member from Northumberland, Peterborough South, and a member for, for Durham for joining me at the Darlington Energy Complex. We had a great uh, meeting there last Friday. And when we went through there, there was 14 different trades, Mr. Speaker. And all 14 absolutely loved us, loved what we're doing. Those are the people that we support, the frontline, hardworking tradespeople. And through our budget of 2019, we passed the Modernizing the Skilled Trades and Apprenticeship Act, which will reduce red tape for employers and apprentices, streamline services and delivery, and help promote the tremendous career opportunities that the skilled trades offer. And Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Supplementary question. Well, thank you very much, Premier, and it's great to hear that we're taking decisive action to improve skilled trades framework ignored for 15 long years by the previous government. I'm disappointed the NDP would refuse to support our plan to reduce the burden on tradespeople. It's obviously it's clear our government's listening and our plan will cut red tape, promote careers open up Ontario for jobs. Speaker, we do know that uh, by 2021, one in five jobs will be in the skilled trades. Yet, we also know so many baby boomers are now retiring. I'm very proud our government recognizes this urgent need to fill the skills gap, open up well-paying, rewarding career pathways for young people. Can the Premier Question. tell us more about our plan for the skilled trades? <laughs> Again, the Premier. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want, to, I want to thank the member for the question again. Through you, Mr. Speaker, the member is absolutely right that our government is taking action to reduce the red tape and burdens on Ontario skilled tradespeople. As part of our plan, Mr. Speaker, to put our skilled tradespeople first, our government is investing $18.1 million in pre-apprenticeship programs to help prepare hard-working Ontarios, Ontarians for careers in the skilled trades, Mr. Speaker. We're, we're, also, we're also investing $12.2 million to support the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program to help students in grades 11 and 12, and they can experience the skilled trades while getting a credit for school. Mr. Speaker, by investing in jobs of today and tomorrow, our government is delivering on our promises Response. to get Ontarians working and make Ontario open for business, open for jobs. Mr. Speaker, it's a shame that the NDP decided to vote against these measures. That would make life easier. Thank you very much. Start the clock. The next question, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this question is for the Minister of Education, given that the Premier seemed unable to uh, answer it yesterday. Speaker, Emily Jenkins is a drama teacher at Perry Sound High School. She grew up in the community, and she came back to teach, which is a job she loves. But after 12 years, Emily has received notice that her job is now at risk thanks to this government's cuts to education. She told the Perry Sound North Star that her family is already cutting back on groceries, curtailing expenses, considering all options, including selling their house, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Wow. Speaker, Emily's story is sadly not unique, especially in her board where 240 secondary teachers have been declared redundant and only 37 are being brought back. Is the minister really going to stand here again and claim that her cuts won't result in job losses? 
The question is from the Minister of Education. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I have to tell you this. I cannot believe that the member opposite, day in and day out, stands up and perpetuates order. nonsense. Because the fact of the matter was, I know that she very carefully worded her question because she knows full well that teachers across this province, as happens every year, are in the current process of being recalled. Yeah, you know, let's year. take a look at this. 82 teachers with the Lambton Kent District School Board who were rumored to be out of work by next school year, and then those rumors are continuing to be perpetuated by the member opposite. Guess what? All of them are being recalled oh. in Lambton Kent. And the Toronto Catholic District School Board are uh, are very much pleased and announcing through social media that 100% of their Boss. high school teachers will have a job in September. Oh. So, I, the list goes on and on. I thank the school boards in Ontario that are choosing to work with us, putting students. Thank you. Thank you. The supplementary question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and believe me, I wish I didn't have to ask these questions every day either. Speaker, this minister will try to blame everyone but herself for these painful cuts. It's real people and real families who have to deal with the impact. At least in Toronto, at least 90 child and youth workers, seven occupational therapists, 10 social workers, 14 speech-language pathologists, and four ABA facility facilitators were let go yesterday. Wow. At a time when we know youth mental health should be a priority, students are going to have to do without in-school supports, and at a time when more students on the autism spectrum will be losing funding and spending more time in our schools, there will be fewer qualified adults to support them. Speaker, will the minister Question. take an ounce of responsibility for this mess and scrap the cuts in our schools? Minister to reply. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And you know, I find it very rich coming from uh, the member opposite. She is a former member of the Toronto District School Board, and she knows full well. She knows full well that the fact of the matter is this is an exercise that happens year in and year out. And the reality is we're investing seven hundred million dollars more in education, and that member. Oh my Speaker, God. this is absolutely preposterous, the I manner in that. which they're continually saying the sky is falling. Let's talk about what we're doing. We're increasing awareness and exposure to the, uh, technology and skilled trades, like the Premier referenced earlier. We're increasing funding for financial literacy. We're increasing funding Response. for math. We're increasing funding for special needs. Speaker, the list goes on and on. And finally, Ontario has a government that believes in education, and we're investing Thank you. The general noise level in the House seems to be increasing during questions and answers, and I would ask the members to please come to order to allow us to have a reasonable question period today. Start the clock. The next question. The member for Don Valley East. My question is to the Attorney General. Recently, Legal Aid has seen their budget cut by over 30 percent, which has been described as many, by many Ontarians as simply cruel. Minister, vulnerable Ontarians rely on access to legal aid and the services that it provides. In fact, Minister, when I was 15 years old, my family relied on legal aid when we were sent an eviction notice. If it wasn't for the Flemington Park Legal Clinic, my single mother and my two brothers may have ended up on the street. Minister, these services protect families. Yet, in response to the blowback by the cuts and the chaos it's caused, the Premier has confirmed that he will guarantee anyone in this province legal aid. I want to know, with these cuts, Mr. Speaker, how will the Attorney General assure that every Ontarian has access to legal aid? Questions addressed to the Attorney General. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member opposite for the question. Ontario has the most comprehensive legal aid system in the entire country, and the Ontario government funds legal aid up to, a tune, up to the tune the amount of almost $433 million. I am very pleased that legal aid uh, has been working closely with my ministry to ensure that frontline services are, will be available to those who need it. Families like your family who needed legal representation were able to go to legal aid, and those services will still be available, Mr. Speaker. We are working very closely with them, and we're very pleased to, repeat that they, to, to report that they will be able to do it. Um, you know, the previous government spent almost $100 million more on legal aid over the last few years, and Ontario taxpayers and the clients who rely on legal aid services did not see an increase in the services as they should have expected given that level Response. of increase in financing. Some lawyers may not welcome renewed accountability at legal aid, Mr. Speaker, but the taxpayers of Ontario and the clients who rely on legal aid will. Thank you very much. Supplementary question. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Not all, not all Ontarians have the ability to go out and just hire a lawyer. Legal aid is about ensuring that the government supports the most vulnerable. It's about ensuring that all Ontarians have the opportunity to defend themselves in court. Now, there are rumours out there attorney, that the Attorney General plans to import a U.S.-style public defender system here in Ontario. Mr. Speaker, will the Attorney General confirm on whether she does in fact plan to, to move towards this American-style system? Again, the Attorney General to reply. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure where the member opposite is getting his information. I'm working hard on reforming legal aid to ensure that it's sustainable and providing legal aid services to the most vulnerable in our society, as it has been doing now for a very long time. Our government's priority is to protecting what matters most, Mr. Speaker, health care and education and legal representation for those who can't afford to pay for legal representation themselves. Legal Aid is working very closely with my ministry to ensure that the frontline services that people need are there for them when they need them, Mr. Speaker. But we will do it in a sustainable way. We're working closely with clinics, with legal aid, with lawyers who provide legal aid to ensure that they are able to, work, to provide the work that they have been doing now for some time. Mr. Speaker, we are able to do that in a sustainable way. And uh, rumors about uh, other systems coming into Ontario to, to, uh, to provide legal aid in a different way uh, are unfounded. The next question, the member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Transportation. Recently, the minister introduced a comprehensive piece of legislation, the Getting Ontario Moving Act. If passed, this legislation will include our proposed measures to cut red tape, save businesses and taxpayers time and money, and help keep Ontario's roads amongst the safest in North America. This, legisla this legislation would also kickstart our government's plan to build more transit that will connect more people to new opportunities. In my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore, the Premier unveiled our government's bold and historic vision for transit, a plan for the 21st century, a $28.5 billion transit vision to expand the province's subway network by 50 per cent and get millions of commuters moving again. We are making life easier for people and businesses in the province by delivering simpler, faster and better government services. Question. Can the minister update the legislature on getting Ontario moving act? Question is to the Minister of Transportation. Thanks very much, uh, Speaker, and I appreciate the work the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore has, has done in the last 11 months, uh, almost 12 months this Friday. Uh, she's been quite an advocate for transit, but has been wonderful to work with, and I continue, hopefully, to continue working with her. Mr. Speaker, she's right. Uh, today we will vote on third reading of Bill 107, which is a very important piece of legislation. The proposed legislation, if passed, will, will cut red tape for job creators. It will reduce burdens so that the businesses, job creators, can get doing what they do best, and that's creating jobs for the people of this province. Mr. Speaker, simply put, we want to transform how the MTO uh, interacts with businesses and people across this province. Despite all the great things this legislation would do, the NDP keep voting against this piece of legislation. I'm hoping today, I hope they take a look at themselves and look at the, how great this piece of legislation is. Stand up, stand up for the interests of Ontarians and vote to support this legislation. This bill is cutting red tape, reducing regulatory burdens in Ontario, and is getting. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the Minister of Transportation for that great response. 
I look forward to third reading vote today, and I hope, too, the opposition does the right thing and votes to get Ontario moving. We have a plan to finally get subways built after 15 long years of barely any action on the part of the previous Liberal government. The proposed Ontario line alone will provide real relief from congestion on Line 1. It will be twice as long as and move twice as many people as the original relief line project, and we'll get it done at about the same cost. We know that we can get these subways built before 2029, and that's a target that was set by the city. And we're going to deliver it by 2027. Can the Minister of Transportation tell us more about the benefits of the Ontario line? Again, the Minister of Transportation. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker, for that question. Simply put, the Ontario line will provide relief that is desperately needed. People are tired of crowded platforms and watching three full trains go by before they can get on with their commute. This is something that everybody wants, and it's time the opposition and the Liberals stood up and voted for the legislation that's going to get subways built in this province, Mr. Speaker. These subways are going to be built in their own ridings on the opposite side, Mr. Speaker. And it makes no sense for those members to vote against it. So I'm, I'm hoping members from the Parkdale Hyde Park and Davenport and Spadina and Rosedale and Toronto Centre and Toronto Danforth, Beaches East York. Don Valley East and West. I hope they take the moment and look Order. after their own constituents and vote for the needed relief that's needed on our subway system today. I hope, Mr. Speaker, we're going to go forward and build this project. The City of Toronto is going to be with us, Mr. Spons. Speaker. Why won't the opposition help us on this issue? Stop the clock. Order. The House will come to order. Restart the clock. The next question, the member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Transportation. Mr. Speaker, since early April, the government has been talking up their transit plan as if it was a done deal, not a few lines drawn in the back of a napkin. Now, the Premier has gone hat in hand to the federal government for the Ontario line, even though the minister himself admitted yesterday that the business case still isn't complete. The feds aren't buying it. They said they need to see real estimates and concrete plans before they consider handing over a single dollar. Mr. Speaker, did the minister really expect anyone to fund his back of a napkin plan when basic details, like where stations will be and how much the line will cost, are still unknown. The question is to the Minister of Transportation. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Speaker, and I, I appreciate the question from the other side. You know, we made it a historic announcement in this province of $28.5 billion to finally build transit that's much needed in this city uh, and in the GTHA. We're, we're building the Ontario line, Mr. Speaker, to bring much needed relief to uh, the Line 1. We are going to extend the uh, Young Subway into Richmond Hill and Markham. We're going to uh, building uh, the Edmonton into Etobicoke towards the airport, Mr. Speaker, and finally, after years and decades of waiting, Scarborough is going to get to the three-stop subway yeah, system, yeah. Mr. Speaker. But yesterday, Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Infrastructure and myself had an announcement and a request for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau just to treat us the same as other provinces and give us a conditional approval for the infrastructure funding, much like they did to uh, British Columbia. In 2017, the Prime Minister, in his own budget, announced funding for a project that wasn't even supported by the province, not even supported by the city, but Once. eventually, a year later, it was supported. They got the business case. So all we're asking is equal treatment. I don't know why the member opposite is against building subways in this city, in the G. I don't know why Prime Minister Trudeau isn't stepping forward and helping support. Thank you. The supplementary question. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Restart the clock. The supplementary question. Okay, thank, back to the Minister of Transportation. So this government now claims they want to work together with other levels of government when it comes to transit. Now that's a bit rich, coming from a Premier who has undercut the City of Toronto every step of the way in their hostile takeover of the subway system. And your reputation is starting to get around. The federal government isn't too eager to jump on board with a government that, in their words, cuts first and thinks later. Mr. Speaker, 
How does the minister expect Ontarians to trust this government with large infrastructure projects like public transit when they can't even play nice with our federal and municipal partners? Minister, uh, Minister of Infrastructure. Referred to the Minister of Infrastructure. Well, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. And let me make it perfectly clear: we will take no advice when it comes to infrastructure from Order. Justin Trudeau Opposition and the Liberal Order. government. In fact, Mr. Speaker, I need to be able to hear the Minister of Infrastructure reply. I would ask the opposition to come to order. Minister of Infrastructure. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Uh, we have forwarded to the federal government 54 projects uh, for funding. That includes 49 projects in rural and northern communities uh, across the province, and as the Minister of Transportation said, five major transit projects uh, inside of the GTHA. We would expect all members in this House to stand up for Ontario. Yeah. Justin Trudeau should uh, treat Ontario like he, like he treats every other province uh, in the country. And Mr. Speaker, like the Minister of Transportation said, the federal government uh, announced their support for Metro Vancouver before City Council supported it and before the province supported Thank it. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question, the member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Speaker, Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance. It is a fundamental aspect of budgeting that one must first accurately compile all the approved program spending through detailed estimates from each ministry. These are then rolled up and aggregated for each ministry and for the government's total budget. The estimates or detailed spending are then tabled and are voted upon in committee and referred back to the House. I know this is the finance minister's first time tabling a budget and the first time tabling detailed estimates. My question, Speaker, is, is the minister confident that the budget is accurate and without significant errors or omissions, or is it possible that he got the cart before the horse? The question is to the Minister of Finance. Well, thank you very much. I can tell you that uh, we're very proud of the budget that we not only presented, but the pr proud of the budget that this government has passed. It's all about protecting what matters most, and that includes health care, education, and social services, and the services that our people in Ontario look forward to receiving on a daily basis. And that is why we have seen an addition of $1.3 billion increase into the uh, health budget. We've seen a $700 million increase into the education budget. Speaker, I've said this many times in this legislature. I simply cannot, I just do not fundamentally understand how the NDP can vote against $90 million for 100 thousand seniors for free dental care. Spons. I simply do not understand why they won't support our Thank you. The member for Essex. The member for Essex come to order. Supplementary question. Again to the Minister of Finance. On March 26, before the release of the budget, the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services stated, and I quote, under the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party, autism funding this fiscal year will be over $600 million. However, her ministry is only seeking approval for $331 million, which is tabled into provincial estimates under vote 702. Speaker, one of three things must be happening. One, the Minister of Social Services is out of the loop and leaving families of autistic children euchred. Two, there is a hidden deficit of nearly $300 million. Or three, the government will secretly use a Treasury Board order to defund other approved programs and Question. services to fill the gap. We don't need that. Speaker. I'd like to have the minister answer which of the three it is. Members, please take your seats. Order. Order. The Minister of Finance to reply. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. 
We have been perfectly clear. Position the budget forward. that was passed by this government is. The opposition must come to order. The independents must come to order. The minister can reply. Thank you, uh, Speaker. We have made ourselves perfectly clear. The budget is fully costed, and all efficiencies and all value for money initiatives have all been accounted for. Speaker, budget 2019 lays out our comprehensive plan and will continue to roll out a responsible path to balance over the months and the years ahead. Speaker, our plan Response. puts people ahead of everything. We put people at the centre of everything we do, and we will continue our path to balance and protect our frontline services. Thank you very much. The next question, the member from Markham Thornhill. Your goggles off. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Transportation. Our government campaigned on a promise to make a life easier for Ontarians by improving transit, reducing congestion, and carrying people to home and work faster, leaving them more time what matters more. I know we have moved quickly over the last 10 months to increase code train service for people throughout the region. This includes the largest increases in code train services in five years on the Lakeshore East and the Lakeshore West Line, more service on the Kitchener Line, and year-round weekdays commuter rail service to Niagara Falls and St. Catharines. Mr. Speaker, can the Minister of Transportation update the House on our co train services in the region? The question is to the Minister of Transportation. Thanks very much, Speaker, and I uh, thank the member from uh, Markham Thornhill. And he is no, he's he's working hard to build that extended subway system in the market. He's been he's been a key part of that project and making it go forward, Mr. Speaker. And as part of the 2019 budget, we announced our commitment to move ahead with the Go Rail expansion program to improve and expand Go Train service. Just last week. The Minister of Infrastructure and uh, my parliamentary assistant, Kinga Surma, uh, were on hand to announce that our government is delivering on our promise by moving forward with the next stage of the Go Rail expansion program and announcing the pre qualified teams that will be bidding on the On Corridor Works project. The four teams were selected based on their experience, ability to design, build, finance, operate, and maintain a project of this scope and complexity. On Transit, MTR, Encore Transit and On Express Transportation Partners are the groups that are bidding, Mr. Speaker. We want to create a more integrated, seamless system, and that's what this project is going to do. Thank you. Supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Minister, for that great answer. It is encouraging to know that our government is putting the people of our province first by moving ahead with the Court Rail expansion program. For years, this province has been plagued by congestion and lack of vital transit infrastructure. With this announcement, our government is showing that we are committed to getting it right, getting this province moving. Mr. Speaker, getting it right means having the right tool for the job, ensuring this project is delivered on time, delivered on budget, will be vital to its success. Can the minister tell us more about how our government is going to carry this project going. Thank you. The Minister of Transportation. Uh, Minister of Infrastructure. The Minister of Infrastructure. Well, thank you uh, to the member opposite for that excellent question and his, for his leadership, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, congestion in the GTHA is an $11 billion problem. This is, uh, has a real impact on people's lives. Last week, I was excited to announce with the Minister of Transportation that our government has launched requests for proposals for the largest transit public-private partnership in Canada's history. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we ask the private sector for their best and most innovative solution to a simple challenge, move people from point A to point B within a certain time frame. 
This project means faster trains, increased ridership and lower maintenance. It will make travelling across the GTHA faster, easier and more seamless. Partnering with the private sector to deliver this project will minimize Response. construction delays and financial risks to taxpayers. This allows us to protect frontline services and programs that matter to people. Mr. Speaker, we're open for business and we're putting Ontario back on track. The next question, the member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Today, we released a report outlining what we have been hearing from parents since the government introduced its devastating autism program, and frankly, it's what we heard under the Liberal program as well. Across this province, we heard that parents aren't getting the help that they need, and they don't trust this government to deliver the program that they deserve. That's why we are calling for an all-party, arm's-length select committee to transparently design and implement a new autism program that will work for families. This is a chance for the government to take the politics out of autism. Will the minister agree to our call and strike a nonpartisan select committee? Members, please take your seats. Questions to the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Uh, thanks very much, Speaker. My uh, pleasure to respond to the member opposite. Obviously, I'm very excited that we appointed last week a nonpartisan advisory panel to the ministry with that. And I'm looking forward to receiving the report from the New Democrats. I have yet to receive it. I'm pleased that members of all parties in this assembly, including the Green Party, the Liberal Party, as well as the New Democrats, including members of the Progressive Conservative government, have had roundtable consultations. I'm happy to provide that to the chair of the Order. committee, who is a Dr. Marie Boutriani, a former Liberal cabinet minister. I'm also excited that we had a number of tel telephone town halls, as well as online surveys, where over 4,000 Ontarians were able to contribute their views, their values, and their thoughts. But, Speaker, I think that we, we must take the politics out of this, which is why I appointed not only a Liberal MPP, former Liberal MPP, it, but a number of my own personal critics so that we could get this right for the children of the province of Ontario with an unprecedented fund of over $600 million. Stop the clock. Start the clock. Supplementary question. Speaker, it wasn't very long ago that this government was calling frustrated parents professional protesters. The same parents who were told by the Conservatives that they wouldn't have to protest on the lawns of Queen's Park under their government. These parents have tried and tried to have their voices heard, only to be stifled by tightly controlled telephone town halls and invite-only community meetings. Families have lost lost their trust in this government and this minister to do the right thing by their children. That's why we're asking for a non-partisan, arm's-length select committee to oversee the implementation of the new autism program. It's time this government introduced some transparency and fairness into the way that it delivers programs. Will this minister get the politics and secrecy out of autism and strike this committee? Members, please take your seats. Minister to reply. I'm very disappointed with the member opposite who continues to bring partisanship into this issue. An unprecedented $621 Opposition come to order. million dollars will be invested this year into um, the Ontario Autism Program. More children are receiving service than ever before in the province, and we have now put forward a select uh, uh, an expert advisory panel uh, by order. a rabid conservative partisan that we know as Dr. Marie Boutriani, a former Liberal cabinet minister, and those Lisa McLeod sycophants at Ontaba and the OAC. The reality is we decided to, to, to take the partisanship and the politics out of this, add an unprecedented amount of money so that we can support every single child in the province of Ontario with autism. But you know what, Speaker? What frustrates me day in and day out on this file is the irresponsibility of the member opposite, the fear-mongering by Order. the leader, and the behaviour by that party who want to play politics with children. Stop the call. Stop the call.
The member for Hamilton Mountain must come to order. The member for Hamilton Mountain must come to order. The House will come to order. The member for Ottawa West Nepean is anxiously and patiently awaiting the opportunity to ask his question. Start the clock. The member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Last week, the minister announced changes to the Ontario Interactive Digital Media Tax Credit. Our government is cutting red tape and levelling the playing field for small and medium interactive digital media companies across this province. In 2016, Ontario's interactive digital media industry employed almost 20,000 people. Members of Interactive Ontario, the association representing companies in the sector, say they plan to hire thousands of new people over the next year, including in Ottawa's West End. Could the minister please outline for the House how our government is working to create an environment where interactive digital media companies can grow and thrive? The Minister of Economic Development, John uh, thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the diligent member from Ottawa West Nepean for that great question this morning. And it was a pleasure to visit last week with Yukon Games here in Toronto for an important announcement that we made. It was great to speak with business leaders in the interactive digital media sector here in Ontario, where they have an impact of $3 billion uh, in that sector for our economy. These companies are working on everything from video game speaker to digital marketing, marketing solutions for some of the world's largest largest companies. The video game industry has come a long way, Speaker, since your Donkey Kong days. It's really, really big business. Jean-Sylvain Sormani is the president of Snowden Studios, a developer in uh, West Ottawa, where the member is from, and he said, I think this is great. And we do too, Mr. Speaker. It's a great change. Small and medium businesses make up 85% of this yeah. space with our changes to the digital media tax credit. Those companies are going to face Response. less red tape when they're accessing this important support. As the member opposite says, thousands and thousands of jobs in Ontario are depending on us, and we're coming through to create even Thank you. Thank you very much. The supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the minister's response. It's always good news for our province any time we can remove red tape for Ontario's businesses. I am pleased to hear the steps our government is taking to help our smaller video game developers to grow and thrive here at home in Ontario. Through strategic investments, we can ensure that Ontario is a leader in this field and create jobs and keep jobs in this province for years to come. Through you, Mr. Speaker, can the minister please advise the House further on how our government is creating an environment in the media sector where we can attract investment and create jobs, growth, and long-term prosperity? Minister. Speaker, I know the Minister of Tourism, Culture, and Sport would like to answer this question. Referred to the Minister of Tourism, Culture, and Sport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, answer that important question and also for the great work that you do out in your constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to commend also the Honourable Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade for the great work he's doing to bring jobs to the province of Ontario. We have tax credits across the media landscape, Mr. Speaker, for film, television, music, books, and of course, video games. These tax credits are distributed through a provincial agency called Ontario Creates. These tax credits, Mr. Speaker, are used for the industries to simply allow them to access funds to be able to do great more work in the province. Mr. Speaker, 
That's why we're committed to cutting red tape for video game developers, striking film and television advisory panel for those tax credits to ensure we're supporting job creation. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question, the member for London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. I've, this morning, I've received a, a media release from London Health Sciences Centre, and I'd like to have a page delivered to the minister in case she hasn't seen it. And this is my question to the Minister of Health. This morning, London Health Sciences Centre announced their budget plans this year, and it's not good. They will need to make $28 million in cuts equal to 2% of their total budget. And they have asked all the departments to find between 2 and 2.5% 2 of cuts to their budgets. Does the minister still stand by her statement that she is not cutting health care? The question is to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. The answer is yes. We are actually investing, as I indicated earlier, $1.3 billion more into health care this year. We're investing in the front lines of our health care system with an extra $384 million for hospitals' operational costs this year. And this includes a $12 million increase in base funding for London Health Sciences Centre in 2019. Our government also announced a $1.2 million investment for London Health Sciences Centre in the fall to help that hospital deal with increases during flu season. We also invested over $8 million as part of our government's larger commitment to upgrade, repair and maintain hospital facilities across the province. Together, these investments will allow able Response. all hospitals, specifically London Health Sciences Centre, to deal with the increases that they are experiencing. Question. In order to achieve 28 million in cuts, London Health Science Centre is forced to reduce staffing hours equivalent to 1.6 per cent of their workforce. To start, there will be a hiring freeze of non-clinical staff, natural attrition and non-union voluntary exits. But London Health Science is clear this is only their goal. And the exact number of layoffs will be unknown for some time. How do budget cuts and layoffs help to end hallway medicine? Does the minister still stand by her statement that there will be no layoffs of frontline health care workers on her watch? Minister. The member will know hospitals are independent corporations that are run by their own boards of directors, and as such, they're making their own decisions with respect to how they're going to deal with their operational pressures. But I would say that we understand that the hospital is working to mitigate the effect on staff by implementing temporary hiring freezes of non-clinical staff through natural attrition and non-union voluntary exits. So I understand the hospital is doing whatever they can do to uh, minimize the effects in terms of job losses, but they make their own decisions with their own board of directors. But we will, as a ministry, continue to work with the hospital to ensure that they can get through the next period of time with the additional help that we have already provided them with in monetary terms. Thank you. The next question, the member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. After more than three years of collecting testimony from Canadians through community meetings, town halls held across the country, the Commission of the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls delivered its final report yesterday. This report contains testimony from over 2,300 family members, survivors, experts, and knowledge keepers collected from heartfelt and often emotional public hearings. Speaker, the minister was in Ottawa yesterday to receive the report on behalf of our government. Can she please tell us the significance of the final report of the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls? The Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. 
the member from Barrie Innisfield for her strong leadership in defending, defending all vulnerable women in the province of Ontario and for bringing this important question to the floor of the Legislature today. I really do appreciate it because it is important that every member in this Assembly understand what took place yesterday um, in our country um, and right here in the province of Ontario. I was proud, as I mentioned earlier, to represent Ontario yesterday and also to be the only uh, level of government, the only uh, provincial government to, to uh, bring us alongside our Ontario Regional Chief Roseanne Archibald to receive the report alongside me. I felt that that was important, Speaker, not only as a gesture but as the next step after the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls report was tabled. Uh, the prevalence of violence against Indigenous women and girls in Canada is entirely unacceptable. Response. And Speaker, that is why this government is committed to supporting vulnerable women, particularly in our Indigenous communities, so that we can ensure their safety, their security, and their their their. Thank you very much. <laughs> Supplementary question. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to the minister for accepting this report on behalf of our government and standing up for Indigenous women and girls and encouraging all Ontarians, both men and women, to stand up against violence against women and girls. Speaker, this report highlights statistics that show Indigenous women and girls in Canada are 12 times more likely to experience violence than non-Indigenous women during their lifetime and demonstrates through testimony how issues such as sex tra trafficking and exploitation are affecting young girls in our communities. This high prevalence of violence against Indigenous women and girls in Canada is entirely unacceptable. Can the minister please share with us the steps our government is taking to combat violence against Indigenous women and girls across this province? Good question. Minister. Thank you very much, Speaker. I take the issue of sex trafficking very seriously. That's why uh, later today I'll be meeting with a number of survivors so that we can move forward on protecting women in a, in a much more uh, effective way across the province of Ontario, including our Indigenous sisters. Uh, the ministry will continue working with First Nations and UE uh, Métis partners to support the delivery of culturally appropriate child welfare services as well. That's extremely important to us. Ontario has signed relationship agreements with three First Nations political territory organizations in relation to child and youth well-being. We have 12 Indigenous Children's Aid Societies right now who deliver culturally appropriate care in the province of Ontario, and these agreements and others in development demonstrate our shared commitment Response. as a province to working together to improve outcomes and, and opportunities for First Nations women and girls. And Speaker, I believe every single member of this Assembly stands committed in ensuring that we protect Indigenous women. Thank you very much. The next question, the member from London North Centre. My question is for the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. London is facing one of the most severe opioid crisis, overdose crises in the country. Last April, five Londoners died in a single week. It was heartbreaking news that we received yesterday that the government abruptly pulled Middlesex London Health Unit's funding application for a supervised consumption site on York Street and did not even provide a reason why. Speaker, the Premier doesn't get to decide the site's location. London City Council does. And yet this government, once again, takes its cues from wealthy insider friends and lobbyists, including Amir Farahi and Blackridge Strategy. There are deep connections between Blackridge Strategy and the Premier's own office staff. Lobbyists pushed out the York Street site cancelled, and sure enough, that's what happened. This is another example of the Premier cutting deals in back rooms and meddling in municipal affairs while vulnerable people pay Question. the price. Will the minister put the needs of Londoners ahead of the Premier's friends and immediately fund the York Street supervised consumption site? Question to the Minister of Health and Long Term Care. Well, I, I thank you for the question, but the premise is entirely incorrect. What I will tell you is that a selection site has been made for King Street that was made on the same criteria that all applicants are treated uh, to. The, uh, the, all applications are evaluated against the exact same criteria, proximity to other sites, services, and community support, ongoing community consultation, integration with primary care treatment and other public health services, defined pathways to addictions treatment and rehabilitation, primary care, mental health, housing, employment, and other health 
and social services. That is a criteria that has been applied to all of the other applicants that have been approved, the other 15 sites across the province of Ontario. London is no different. The King Street site has Response. been chosen as the applicant, as the site that's going to be providing those treatment and services. There's no question that London needs those services, and they are going to be provided at the King Street site. That concludes our question period for this morning. The Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry has informed me that he has a point of order. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'm uh, pleased to welcome to uh, Queen's Park today Pramila Balasubramanian, who is the mother of Paige Aryan Harshith from my riding of Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Pramila, welcome to Queen's Park. I believe the member for Scarborough Guildwood may have a point of order. Mr. Border Speaker, I would also like to welcome back to the legislature Gwen Chapman of the Canadian Black Caucus, who is leading uh, a delegation of young people here today, along with Nadine Spencer, the president of the BBPA, and many other leaders from the Black community. And it's also my pleasure to welcome Collège La Cité de Toronto and uh, Amy McDonnell, uh, Ilungua Basui, Sabine Somer, Bessie Yeo. And Sebastian Lapierre, bienvenue. bienvenue. The member for Toronto St. Paul's has a point. I just want to invite all the members in the House to join us at the bottom of the stairs for a photo for World Eating Disorders Action Day. After question period. Thank you. Member for Toronto Centre, point of order. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I just uh, wanted to take a quick moment uh, and share with the legislature that uh, my city councillor in Toronto Centre, uh, Kristen Wong Tam, who I know many of you probably know, um, her and her wife Farah uh, welcomed their brand new baby into the world yesterday. So we wanted to say a congratulation and welcome to baby Keon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before we move to the votes, I wish to remind all members that tomorrow, after question period, we are going to be having the official photograph of the 42nd Parliament take place, so I hope you will all be here for that. We have a deferred vote on Government Notice of Motion number 65 relating to the allocation of time on Bill 115, an act to amend the Liquor Control Act with respect to the termination of a specified agreement. Call in the members. This is a five-minute bell.
We would ask the members to please take their seats. On June the 3rd, 2019, Mr. Yakubowski moved Government Notice of Motion No. 65 relating to allocation of time on Bill 115. All those in favour of the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Smith, Bay of Quinty. Mr. Smith, Bay of Quinty. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Bethlehem Falls. Mr. Bethlehem Falls. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Ms. Elliott. Ms. Elliott. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Tabola. Mr. Tabola. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Pettipe. Mr. Pettipe. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Calandra. Mr. Calandra. Mr. Parson. Mr. Parson. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Ms. Tran. Mr. Philopoulos. Mr. Trantha Philopoulos. Mr. Sarkari. Mr. Sarkari. Mr. Ostra. Mr. Ostra. Ms. Minus. Ms. Minus. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Kusindova. Ms. Kusindova. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Carahalios. Mrs. Carahalios. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Ms. Kanji. Ms. Kanji. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Cram. Mr. Cram. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Tangri. Mrs. Tangri. Mr. Anand. Mr. Anand. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Smith. Peter Mr. Smith. Peter Brokaworth. Mr. Bauma. Mr. Bauma. Mr. Cusetto. Mr. Cusetto. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babber. Mr. Babber. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Shubi Song. Mr. Shubi Song. Madame Jelen. Madame Jelen. Mr. Tabin. Mr. Tabin. Mr. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Vanta. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Nadishak. Mr. Nadishak. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Satler. Ms. Satler. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Ms. Carpoche. Mr. Carpoche. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Styles. Ms. Styles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Ms. Andrews. Ms. Andrews. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Borgwan. Mr. Borgwan. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rakosovic. Mr. Rakosovic. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Uh, Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Uh, Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Hilliard. Mr. Hilliard. The ayes are 68, the nays are 42. The ayes being 68 and the nays being 42, I declare the motion carried. We have a deferred vote on Government Notice of Motion number 66, relating to the allocation of time on Bill 117, an act to amend the Ontario Society for the Prevention of Cru Cruelty to Animals Act. Call in the members. This will be another five-minute bell. Same vote. Same vote. Call on the members. Mr. Walker moved Government Notice of Motion Number 66 relating to allocation of time on Bill 117. All those in favour of the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. 
Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith Bay of Quincy. Mr. Smith Bay of Quincy. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Bethan Fowler. Mr. Bethan Fowler. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Ms. Elliott. Ms. Elliott. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Mr. McLeod. Mr. McLeod. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Tabolo. Mr. Tabolo. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Pettipee. Mr. Pettipee. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Letcher. Mr. Letcher. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kalander. Mr. Kalander. Mr. Parsons. Mr. Parsons. Mr. Skelly. Mr. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Ms. Triantafilopoulos. Mr. Triantafilopoulos. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Ostrov. Mr. Ostrov. Ms. Midas. Ms. Midas. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Kusindova. Ms. Kusindova. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Carahalios. Mrs. Carahalios. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Ms. Kanji. Ms. Kanji. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Cram. Mr. Cram. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Tangri. Mrs. Tangri. Mr. Anand. Mr. Anand. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Smith Peterborough Court. Mr. Smith Peterborough Court. Mr. Bowman. Mr. Bell. Mr. Cusetto. Mr. Cusetto. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babber. Mr. Babber. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time. And we it should be so. Madame Jelen. Madame Jelen. Mr. Tabby. Mr. Tabby. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Vanta. Ms. Orvath. Ms. Orvath. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Satley. Ms. Satley. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Mamako. Mr. Mamako. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Ms. Carpoche. Mr. Carpoche. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Styles. Ms. Styles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Ms. Andrew. Ms. Andrew. Mr. Hat. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Borgwan. Mr. Borgwan. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rakosovic. Mr. Rakosovic. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Assad. Mr. Assad. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. The ayes are 72, the nays are 37. The ayes being 72 and the nays being 37, I declare the motion carried. We have a deferred vote on government notice of motion. Oh, sorry. We have a deferred vote on third reading of Bill 107, an act to amend the Highway Traffic Act and various other statutes in respect of transportation-related matters. Call in the members. This is another five-minute call. On May 29, 2019, Mr. Yurick moved third reading of Bill 107, an act to amend the Highway Traffic Act and various other statutes in respect of transportation-related matters. All those in favour of the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith-Bay of Mr. Smith Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Bethlehem Falls. Mr. Bethlehem Falls. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Ms. Elliott. Ms. Elliott. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. 
Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Yakubuski. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Tabola. Mr. Tabola. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Pettipes. Mr. Pettipes. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kalan. Mr. Kalan. Mr. Parson. Mr. Parson. Mr. Skelly. Mr. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Miss Trantafilopoulos. Miss Trantafilopoulos. Mr. Sarkari. Mr. Sarkari. Mr. Ostra. Mr. Ostra. Miss Midas. Miss Midas. Miss Park. Miss Park. Miss McKenna. Miss McKenna. Uh, Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Kusindova. Ms. Kusindova. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Hardman. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Carahalios. Mrs. Carahalios. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Ms. Kanji. Ms. Kanji. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Cramp. Mr. Cramp. Mrs. Wise. Mrs. Wise. Mrs. Tangri. Mrs. Tangri. Mr. Anand. Mr. Anand. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Smith. Peterborough Corth. Mr. Smith, Peterborough Corth. Mr. Baum. Mr. Baum. Mr. Cusetto. Mr. Cusetto. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Can Mr. Canapathy. Mr. Canapathy. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Baver. Mr. Baver. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Madame Jelena. Madame Jelena. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Vanta. Ms. Should be Song. Should be Song. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Natashak. Mr. Natashak. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Satler. Ms. Satler. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Bagel. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Carpoche. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Stiles. Ms. Stiles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Ms. Andrew. Ms. Andrew. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Bourguin. Mr. Bourguin. Mr. Bourguin. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rakosa. Mr. Rakosa. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Assange. Mr. Assange. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Hilliard. Mr. Hilliard. The ayes are 68, the nays are 41. The ayes being 68 and the nays being 41, I declare the motion carried. Be it resolved that the bill be now passed and be entitled as in the motion. This House stands in recess until 3 p.m.